Hey guys, it's Callus here with more Callus Invitational content. This is the first set of round three, and as a reminder, all sets in this round are lower bracket only. The winner's bracket guys, eight of them have the week off. They'll all be back to play next week. But for now, it is time for eight lower bracket sets to eliminate eight more players from this tour. The first of which will be either Zomog or Solwyn, both of which had rough tours last year. Uh, Solwyn going 0-2 and Zoma going 1-2 after making it through play-ins to his credit. And one of them is going to repeat their rough tour this year. It's going to be a 1-2 record for one of these gentlemen. The other will be 2-1 and will fight on next week. It is a best of three as it will be for quite a while. It doesn't shift over to best of five until quite a bit later in the tour. So let's get into it and see how it plays. So there's Zom on the bottom and Solwyn on the top. A Salamence lead and a... Metagross lead respectively. They're both threatening to each other here. Earthquake does a ton but doesn't kill and Meteor Mash also does a ton but certainly with a critical hit is going to kill and he's going to find an attack raise. So early small advantage for Solwind but he's going to get his guy revenge killed and Magneton is going to be left to face a counterpart Magneton from Solwyn. Interesting, he's got to be pretty confident he can win this 1v1. He's got to have HP Fire. He's got to either have a lot of speed or a lot of special defense. He's got to feel confident in his matchup. And indeed, he is faster. He does have HP Fire. Down goes the opposing Magneton. Early 5-4 to four lead for Solwind. At this point, he switches out. He's not willing to let his Magneton simply die. He goes to Snorlax here, previously unrevealed. Takes HP, presumably Grass just fine from Celebi and he's going to curse up until Celebi shows Leech Seed which he does right here that is probably going to deter him from staying in too too long Skarmory comes in at this point and the Lax is going to stick it out for at least one turn opting for a body slam interesting that Zom switches in Skarm knowing there's a Magneton on the other side he's going to pull back at this point anticipating exactly that and good thing he does because Solwyn does in fact go to his Magneton these teams are looking pretty similar here. As Solwyn goes to his own Celebi, we seem to be looking at balanced offenses of sorts with Magneton from both players. Swords Dance here does not get passed, which he obviously had, but it was interesting that he opted to switch there as opposed to BP there. I don't think I agree with that decision. Uh, nevertheless, Mag came in, Mag went out, and Mag again comes into Skarm. Finally, Zom gives in and says, All right, I'm spiking, do what you gotta do. And it's a critical hit from Thunderbolt, negating any chance the Skarm would have had to survive, but it's an unfavorable roll to begin with since the Magneton was holding, presumably, a Magnet, and therefore the Skarm was a 3-1 to one dog to die. Alright, so we end up with Celebi on Celebi. Solwyn with a pretty good lead at this point, 5-3. to three. Like I said, the team's remarkably similar here. Metagross, which Solwyn also had, now comes in for Zom. Here's the Swords Dance BP. The recipient is going to be a Zapdos, previously unrevealed for Solwyn. That's going to take a Meteor Mash that it, of course, resists pretty well. Only 28%. Thunderbolt coming down. Doesn't even do half. 43. And here comes another Mash. But what he really needs here is an attack raise. Otherwise, Zapdos will win this 1v1. Meta's going to have to crit him here. He's not playing this game anymore. Zom pulls it back. He goes to Celebi. That gets Thunderbolted. 17%. Uh, the attack here actually could matter if it's a Drill Pack Zapdos. If he had that, he certainly would have gone for it there. So it must not be a Drill Pack Zapdos. Instead, he goes back, and there's the confirmation in case we were wondering, is it Ice, is it Fire, blah, blah. It is, in fact, the more standard HP Grass for Zom, which does very little to the opposing Celebi. Solwyn goes Leech Seed into Celebi. He was obviously confident there would be a switch, and he was correct. He catches Meta. We now end up with Celebi on Celebi, and the Swords Dance comes down for Solwyn. We know that he has Baton Pass. We've already seen it. Very well may do that here. Of course, he can just get hit by a Leech Seed that we know this Celebi has. Here's Aerodactyl, and I hate that Calm Mind from Zom. I think Leech Seed is where he wanted to be there. This Aerodactyl at plus two, very dangerous now. There's Hidden Power. Aerodactyl obviously faster than Milotic. Here comes Meta. And Hidden Power, fine, he'll survive, but this very well may not be a Choice Band arrow. We may be, may be looking at a 4 attacker here. I guess it is banded, he gets out of the way, so Zom is going to live to fight another day. If that were a 4 attacker, Aerodactyl would have simply cleaned the game right then and there. 
It's going to be Protect from Meta and Thunderbolt from Zapdos. Fine, but Zapdos still in a very good position to win the 1v1 here without too much trouble. Celebi comes in because it basically has to. And Toxic is the right prediction for Soul Wind, but he does not get rewarded for it. The 85-15 is going to miss for him. Toxic again, going to connect this time, and it's going to be a Retaliation Leech Seed. That's going to cost him 2 PP because of the pressure ability, but it doesn't look like this game is likely to go long enough to where PP becomes a realistic factor. And come mine now for Celebi, but unless he also has BP, which we have not seen the last move, uh, that's really not going to help all that much since the problem right now is the Toxic more than anything else. Hidden Power Grass there, only 17% against Lax. That just does not seem all that exciting. And he's going to switch. He's going to go to Meta here, which is getting pretty low. And Soul Wind all over it goes to Zapdos into the meta, which is where he wants to be. Meta has managed to lefties up to a decent HP. Interesting that he doesn't bother protecting there. I think I would have if I Zom. Feels like a missed opportunity to gain lefties. Nevertheless, Soul Wind again reads Zom perfectly. He goes Toxic into the meta. And he's right. He connects with the incoming Celebi. So there have been multiple good predictions from Soul Wind, knowing what his opponent's going to do. So they're both suffering from Toxic and Leech Seed, respectively. Here comes the Lax. And here comes Recover from Celebi. So we now have the full set. HP Grass, Leech Seed, Calm Mind, Recover. That's going to have a hard time getting through the Zapdos and through the Lax. Seems like a not ideal set to have in this particular matchup. And here we are again with Zapdos and Meta. We've kind of grinded to a halt here after a pretty fast start with a lot of knockouts. There hasn't been a knockout in a while now. We are sitting at 5-3 to three, as we have been for a bit. But it certainly feels like Soul Wind, who has the two Pokemon advantage, is in the driver's seat here. Not going too, too fast. He's not cranking his advantage, but it doesn't feel like Zom is making all that much progress as far as his comeback is concerned. And I see a pretty clear path to victory for Soul Wind eventually. But I don't know about Zom. It seems difficult for him to win. I think the Aerodactyl is very threatening for Soul Wind if he can get in at the right time. I think the Zapdos is also threatening to everything other than the Celebi. It just seems difficult for Zom to get there. And Soul Wind has been very consistent since it's one of those unusual games where neither player brought sand. Soul Wind has been very consistent in leftying up his Zapdos. Very healthy at this point. It's revealed to be double status Zapdos. It had not shown the Thunder Wave before now, but it has both Thunder Wave and Toxic, and now we know. And Soul Wind, once again, I feel like a broken record, is very, very good at predicting what Zom's going to do. He again goes Toxic into a Toxic Immune Pokemon and is going to connect. But the bottom line here is Soul Wind at some point is going to get a Thunderbolt off on something other than Celebi, because Celebi is just flat out going to run out of Leech Seeds at some point. It's going to have to get out of the way because of Toxic, and that's going to be Solwyn's opportunity to nail something else. There is a Leech Seed, but these are 2 PP a pop. They're going to run out quicker than you think, and Solwyn seems to recognize exactly what he needs to do to win this game. Zapdos is suffering from the Leech Seed, but Celebi is getting donked by that Toxic at this point. 30 plus percent coming on this next one. And Celebi gets out of the way. That's going to enable a Thunderbolt on Meta. Crit is certainly going to speed things up. And with that, Zom is going to go to the Concession Stand. That is going to be the forfeit. Not even going to play it out. And we are going to go to a Game 2 with a pretty convincing win for Soul Win in Game 1. I'm going to do this all in one video as I have been doing lately, and I'm doing this with Hypercam 2, which is primitive technology. There is no editing, there is no pausing, getting a drink and coming back. I'm doing this all in one go, all in one take. If I fuck up, I fuck up, and I'm sure I do all the time. What I am going to do is ask you guys to give me a little five second leeway here to grab a drink. Just going to do that, and then we'll get to game two. Appreciate it. Whole, uh, whole milk, hood whole milk specifically, very important for this narrator. Alright, here's the second game. 
Keeping in mind that it's a best of three, you guys just saw the first game, so Zom is going to need two in a row to stay in the tour. If Solwyn wins this game or a potential game three, he will remain alive and he will eliminate Zomog from Kalos Invitational 4. Here is game two. Zom once again on the bottom, Solwyn on the top. Standard T-Tower lead against the not-so-standard Blaziken lead, but Blaziken, absolute threat to that Tyranitar, could potentially hit him with that 4x fighting weakness. Here comes Swampert, which if Blaziken has HP Grass, which it often does, it could be a big threat to that as well. Instead, he's going to opt for Focus Punch, which does not necessarily mean he doesn't have HP Grass, but he doesn't show it there. And Solwyn kind of sniffs that out, goes for Protect. It also gets free Sand Damage on the Blaziken, who does not have Lefties. He's going to go Focus Punch again, so again, maybe he either doesn't have HP Grass, or he thought there would be a switch, and it would be better to Focus Punch there. And it does do a lot, that Stab Focus Punch. But the Blaziken without lefties is getting worn down. And he does have Hidden Power, but it's not Grass. Hidden Power Grass would have killed the Swampert there, but that must have been HP, I guess, Ice. Thinking that something resisting HP Grass, like a Zapdos or a Salamence or whatever, would have come in there. But that is not the case, and the Blaziken's going to go down without doing too, too much damage. Blaziken is generally a very threatening Pokemon against these reactive stall teams, which is what Solwyn seems to have here. But the Blaziken threat was neutralized fairly easily. Zomog going to be wishing he had HP Grass there, but he does not. Uh, it looks like some kind of mixed offense for Zom, which has been the most popular archetype of the tour. Blissey here is going to go with Thunder Wave. Here comes Focus Punch that's going to be disrupted by Seismic Toss. Good thing Solwyn did not switch to Tyranitar there. It would have died had the Lax not been fully paralyzed. But Solon makes the more aggressive play with the S-Toss to break up that Focus Punch. Zom's going to have the courage to go for it again. And Solwyn has been consistently throughout this entire series up to this point out predicting Zomog and reading him well. He will once again break that Focus Punch with a Seismic Toss. Very likely we'll do it a third time here. And Zom is going to go Focus Punch again. And Solwyn switches out this time. So Zom gets this one right. And he connects with the third times the charm, Focus Punch, on the Swamp Bird for 40%. Bring him into the red at 16%. He's going to go aggro, go earthquake. And frustration is going to get the Swamp Bird. So the Lax, despite being paralyzed, manages to do some work and get a knockout. And we've got ourselves a 5 to 5 situation. Magneton, the best switch in that Soulwind has here. That's a little bit curious, but. Going to try to Thunderbolt finish off the Lax. Zom is not going to allow it. He's got a free switch here into Swampert that he utilizes. And here comes the Prickler. Sand Veil, the talk of the tournament. Could this be the Double Veil team that we have already seen a bunch of times? The infamous Double Veil team that is so divisive in this tour. Could it be Last Poke Gligar from Soulwind? Certainly possible. There is Salamence going for Brick Break. That's going to connect 40% on Bliss, bringing her to exactly 50. Lax comes in on a poke that it is presumably safe against, but Solwyn with the aggressive play, Ice Beam. Maybe he thought there was a Dug Trio coming in there. I think that's probably what he's playing around. It also gets the Salamence should he stay in and try to get cute, but neither of those things occurred. And Solwyn again goes for the aggressive play. Seismic Toss to kill the Lax so it can't. Focus Punch on the Soft Boil, but that's not what occurred either. Uh, Zomog did manage, with the threat of those things, did manage to prevent the Blissey from getting a Soft Boiled off, and Cacturn makes its reappearance here. Gonna sub up in the Swampert's face. Swampert not afraid of a potential Grass attack. Stays in, goes Ice Beam, does not connect. Sandvale kicking in already, and Cacturn now can either go for HP Grass, which he does in fact have. There's the one-hit KO on Swampert from 90. Not only does he get a kill, but he is safely behind a sub, and at best, he's gonna begin spiking up here, and that's gonna be real obnoxious for Zom. His meta has HP Fire, as it turns out. Connects, breaks the sub. However, he's leech seated here. Nothing preventing Cacturn from subbing up again, which is exactly what's going to happen. Hidden Power this time is going to miss, and we are back to square one. Cacturn safely behind a sub against a leech seated poke. He's going to be able to sit there and spike up, and there is nothing that Zom can really do about this. He's going to attempt Hidden Power again. He's going to miss a second time in a row. And Sandvale just doing what Sandvale does. This is why it's so controversial. This is absolutely obnoxious for Zom. 
and he's going to switch out at this point. Spikes layer number two coming down. No spinner for Zom, so he's going to have to play the rest of the game with however many spikes Solwyn manages to get down. There's a third miss in a row against the Cacturn with a 100% accurate move. This time it was Thunderbolt. It's not going to connect. Leech Seed will, and Cacturn doing its thing. There's a fourth miss in a row for Zom. This time, Thunderbolt. So he's gone HP Fire, HP Fire, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, all four of which have missed due to Sandvale. And it's just going to be an unnecessary sub for Soulwind. He hasn't even bothered getting his third layer of spikes down. Doesn't feel like he needs it. Has plenty of opportunities to put it down. There's Leech Seed, there's Hidden Power. Finally, something connects, but... This Cacturn has been at 100% for quite a while. It is in no danger. It's just going to do the Substitute Leech Seed dance over and over again. And there is the sub as the Zapdos comes in. What Zom really needs here is Roar on Zapdos, but he doesn't seem to have it. And the Cacturn's going wild. There's another Thunderbolt miss. This is so frustrating to play against. There's finally a little bit of a break for Zom as Leech Seed misses against the Pressure Pokemon in Zapdos. But man, the damage has been done. Two layers of spikes established. Can lay down a third any time that he feels like it. He's racked up damage on the Metagross. He's gotten some damage, uh, damage on the Zapdos. And he's really not in any danger here. Here comes Salamence for an irrelevant Intimidate. Cacturn, of course, going to hide behind its substitute as it does. See if the Salamence can scare off the Cacturn. Certainly won't do it from behind a sub. So it's a Mixed Mence. Goes Dragon Claw. And Leech Seed, again, going to connect. Uh, it says that he's got nine left. He may have a couple less because a couple of them have been against Zapdos, which has a pressure ability, but he does still have an okay amount of Leech Seeds. And finally, Fire Blast, which is less accurate than many of the things that missed, is going to connect against Cactur. And he actually never did establish that third layer of spikes. He was content with two. So that's what it's going to be for the rest of the game. That's going to be enough to kill the Lax. Down that goes, going to fodder itself here, preventing the T-Tower from getting off a DD or anything along those lines. And Zapdos into T-Tower as a switch. Zom must be desperate. But Solwind is going to respect it and get out of the way anyway. Maybe he's afraid of a T-Wave. He goes to Magneton, that gets Thunderbolt. It's going to do 41% and find a lucky 10% para. Going to go Thunderbolt again. Hoping for a crit or a full para, gets neither, and Magneton retaliates with its own Thunderbolt, knocking out Zapdos from 63%. So that obviously had to be a pretty offensive Zapdos to die from that Thunderbolt there. Zom is down to two pokes, and he's got three pokes staring him down on the other side after knocking out the Magneton. Blissey at 50% comes in. It took 40% last time from Brick Break, so it's safe here from anything other than a critical hit. Here comes Meta. Soulwind is going to take the conservative middle ground, going with Thunder Wave. The other options there were Soft Boiled or Ice Beam, but I think Thunder Wave is a great play. Can't go too far wrong either way. And it is now confirmed. It is, in fact, Double Veil. Here is the Gligar appearance, and I think that's really bad for Zomog. I think the Gligar here has a wonderful chance to set up and create huge problems. It does get intimidated here, but that's not going to prevent a substitute. He's going to be able to get a Swords Dance or an attack off here. And if Sandvale kicks in, this game, as we've seen so many others be, will just be over at the hands of Gligar here. Dragon Claw pops the sub. Hidden Power only 22% due to Intimidate, but the follow-up Dragon Claw, what do you know, not going to connect because of Sandvale, and there is a 20% Hidden Power. The Gligar not hitting too, too hard right now because of the Intimidate, but the question is, can the Mence hit the Gligar? And this time he does with Dragon Claw. So the next hit to actually connect is going to knock out one of the pokes. Salamence is faster, he'll have the first opportunity. There's the Dragon Claw, and he's going to connect. So Gligar, this game, was far from devastating the way we've seen it be so many other times up to this point. It leaves us in a 2v2 situation, the Blissey against the Meta and the Salamence. Meta comes in, stepping on the two layers of spikes. There is a Seismic Toss, and that is going to effectively end the game unless Zomog can find 
an immediate brick break critical hit. It's going to be his only out. It will not kill Blissey without a crit. That's the absolute only play for Zom here. He could brick break to kill both the Blissey and the T Tower. Might need a crit on both of them, in fact. But he's got to get one right here, or this is done. Going to go for it. Going to come up short. And there is the Seismic Toss to end the day. Soul win with two pokes left. This game quite a bit closer than the other. But nevertheless, Soulwind is going to be the winner here. He is going to eliminate Zom. Zom in back-to-back -back years in this tour is going to exit with a 1-2 and two record. Soulwind, who went 0-2 last year and in general has had a couple of tough tours in a row, is going to be 2-1 this year and continue to fight on. He's making a nice little run in this tour. But he's going to be our first victor of round 3 and Zom is going to be out. There are seven more sets that have not yet played in this round. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to those. I know that I am, and I'll bring them to you when I get them. Thanks for watching.